Tuesday night in training, we worked on an activity where we're trying to find a striker but then support that player, not just play it up to a forward and then hope they take off and go score a goal for us, but play into that striker and then support that ball. In this activity, there was a central playing space. The green team in this diagram was going to the left. The gray team was going to the right. The very first part of the activity, we were simply trying to find our striker in what I labeled as end zone one. One of the main coaching points I was trying to bring out for the kids was that I wanted our number nine to get as high up the field as they can to create as much space for themselves to play in. If you could imagine an opponent, I'm going to take a player from over on the side here. And if you can imagine that as a central defender putting pressure on our striker, there's a lot of space for our number nine to come into and receive the ball. Oftentimes the players want to play as close as they can to their teammates at the front of that end zone, but you can see by doing this, if we have that defender in on their back, this creates a lot less space for them to play in when they have to check to the ball. The game became increasingly more difficult, as the first round through all they had to do was find their striker in that end zone to receive a point. In the first variation of the game, you had to find your striker in that first end zone, and that player then had to find a teammate back in the central playing space. The next variation became to find the striker in that end zone, play back into this central playing space, and then find your striker again in the end zone. As the game became more and more difficult, we demanded the players find the striker in the end zone, go back into a player in the central playing space, and then find that striker now in end zone two so they could threaten the space in behind our opponent. In the final variation of the game, you had to find the striker in the first end zone, play back into the central playing space, and find another teammate in the end zone too. So now we had to play into our nine, back into the central playing space, and have one of the three from that central area threaten end zone two. In a 2015 World Cup match against Colombia, you can see Alex Morgan playing as high as she can up the field, stretching her opposing defensive line. There are a few ways you can play what we call between the lines. You can play between a line of defense for your opponent and their midfield line. You can play between their midfield line and their forward line. You can even play between their goalkeeper and their line of defense if you don't mind starting in an offside position, as long as you time things right and come back onside before the ball is played to you. You can also play between the lines from left to right. Playing in the space between these two defenders gives her enough room to turn and play forward once she receives the ball. Here you can see forwards from Queens Park Rangers, Charlie Austin and Bobby Zamora creating as much space as they can by threatening their opponent by playing on their line of defense. This gives them a little space to check into and it also allows them to threaten the space behind their opponent. In this picture you can see Olivier Giroud when he was playing with Arsenal. He's playing in between the defensive line made up by Akore and Clark for Aston Villa and their midfield line. He's also positioned himself between Akore and Clark so that he's playing between the lines laterally from left to right as well. Now you can see when Arsenal is ready to play the ball forward, he's found himself as high as he can on that line of defense for Aston Villa, ready to threaten the space behind them. You can see also by getting as high as he can here, he's created space for himself to check back into if he won the ball played into his feet. So if you have a son on one of our U12 boys teams, ask them if they remember any of these coaching points from Tuesday night. We talked about our number nine starting position, the timing of that player's runs, the shape of that player's runs. We had a lot of discussion about whether we should play to that player's feet or play to the space behind them. We talked to a lot of the players in the central playing space about receiving the ball across their body. We talked a little bit about how you can demand the ball without verbally asking for the ball and drawing attention to yourself. And of course, one of the entire activity was about support. So ask your son if they remember any of these points and have them explain them to you.